All right, so we're here in Tokyo, Japan, sourcing green tea, matcha green tea, but I have a feeling something might have got lost in translation. All right, so now that's done, I think it's time to get to business and find some matcha green tea. Mate, do you know where we can find a green tea, matcha green tea from? <laughs> Mike? G'day guys, my name is Guy Tell, I'm from Bondi Harvest and we're on a journey to source the best ingredients we cook with every day. We're here to find the people, the places, the land that produce these vibrant flavours. So we've come to Tokyo, Japan to find the best matcha green tea. So come with me, let's go find the source. Japan is like no other place on earth. The lights, the cuisine, the culture, the people, and vending machines, well, for pretty much everything. All right, so we've got popcorn, marbles, we've got spaghetti in a can, we've got yakitori in a can, we've got trains, everyone needs a train, and we've got some matcha green latte. So I'm gonna go a matcha green tea latte. It's not so bad from a can. So we've got our first ever takoyaki, fried batter, and it's got some really nice soft tender octopus in there. Let's give this a go. So good, so tasty. Matcha soft serve ice cream. Let's give this a go. Delicate, it's really tasty. All this rum is making me really hungry. Let's see how we go with that. <laughs> Have a try. Oh man, that's good. Not bad from a vending machine. <laughs> a random choice. I think I did alright. Alright, we're about to rock up into a Japanese tea merchant and they sell some of the finest matcha from roasted to organic. So this is what we're after. That's the matcha tea. It's a fine ground powder and it's specially grown and processed from the green tea leaf. And it smells absolutely delicious. I'm pretty pumped to get out to the country and see how it's sort of brewed and made in more of a traditional methods. So let's head out there and let's learn a little bit more. For our search of matcha tea, we're going to leave the city, we're going to head to the heartland and historical hub of Japan. Okay, so we've travelled to Nirumaru Tea House. I mean, this place is absolutely gorgeous. And we're here to experience the traditional way of drinking matcha tea. I'm pretty excited, it's my first time. I think we're in for a really awesome experience. Oh, thank you, Deska. Wow, this place is beautiful. I'm sitting here and looking out to the gorgeous tranquil gardens. Japanese matcha traditions date back to the 12th century with Chinese origins, but it wasn't until the 16th century that this process turned into this amazing ceremony. It's quite an art to putting the tea together in the tea ceremony way. It's quite a procedure. Historically, there's certain rules done the same way over and over again. Arigato gozaimasu. To learn a little bit more about matcha tea, we've headed down to the foothills of Mount Fuji, the Shizuka region, and we're going to catch up with Yoji, a local farmer. His green tea farm is unbelievable. This place is so beautiful. So let's go meet him. Konnichiwa. Gai desu. Hi. Cup of tea for me? Yeah? Awesome. It's a beautiful farm. There we go. <laughs> a cup of green tea is more than just a drink. You know, it's a way of respect. It's, it's a way of inviting someone into your house. And I'm quite humbled. It's such a tasty cup of green tea made from these leaves here. So, thank you very much. Oishi. Just a shibui. Really good, really. Mm. Do you want to show me around your farm? I can look. Yeah. Thank you. Green tea's been growing in this area for 100 years. It's when they first started to cultivate it such a long, long time ago. So it's the difference in temperature, like the seasons, the hot, the cold, it makes the, the, the trees and the plants just flourish. Mm -hmm. I mean, these Fast are flourishing so. beautiful, look at them. Okay, so you just use the top bit, the, the, the new growth. Mm. When they pick the green tea leaves, they go for the very top, young, sort of sweet leaves. The large ones below are quite bitter. How do you pick it? What's the, the right way to pick it? Need heat. Yep. And then pop. Okay, beautiful. So just gently. <laughs> Look, it's like a professional. Yeah. <laughs> We've done this before. <laughs> so give me a go. You've just done ten. I'll try and do one. Hi. <laughs> 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 good. 
And what's the process of turning um, you know, this green leaf into uh, matcha? Steam, so, so, so. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so you, you, you pick, mm. then steam, mm. and then laid out to dry, and then ground up into like a, a powder, mm. and then it's ready to, to drink. So this, so this. Awesome, that's unbelievable. All this green tea picking and exploring is making me hungry, so I think I'm gonna go cook up a feast. You can have some lunch? Make, make you some tea? All right. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right, so we're at the base of Mount Fuji. We're in between these awesome green tea farms. I'm gonna do a yakanuki barbecue, which is like a Japanese barbecue. So we've got some yakitori chicken, we've got some gorgeous wagyu beef, and we've got some corn. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to do three different dipping sauces. So when doing barbecues, it's really important to remember, you know, what takes the longest to cook. And that's obviously gonna go on first. And for us, it's gonna be corn. So we're just gonna peel it and just make sure you get these sort of stringy bits as well, because they're quite horrible. I'm gonna slice that in half. It just makes it easier to grill. So we're just going to skewer it, just to make it easier to turn on the barbecue. While that's grilling, we're going to glaze it. With a bit of sesame oil. Okay, so our corn's cooking. The next step is to do our ginger, soy and garlic glaze. So into a glass bowl or whatever bowl you have handy, add your liquids. 80 mils of sake, about 80 mils of mirin as well. A little bit of sesame oil in there as well. And then we've got some soy sauce, toasted white and black sesame seeds and then we'll start grating all our other flavours in there as well. One clove of garlic in there and a good centimetre of ginger. And yes, because this is a glaze, we're gonna go some sugar as well. It's gonna caramelise and it's gonna stick to whatever you're barbecuing. And then we'll just bring that together, give it a good mix, throw it into a pot. Keep your eye on your corn, just move it to the side if you think it's burning or if it's cooking too quickly. So just throw it in the stove, reduce it down, all that flavour is going to come together. And then while that's doing its thing, we're going to start doing our other sauces. So our ponzu is next. Traditionally, a ponzu marinates for about 42 hours, and then you strain it. I don't have 42 hours. So this is my quick ponzu sauce. It's really easy. We're going to add our soy sauce just straight into the bowl. Marin again on top of that. I'm going to add some sesame seeds. They're toasted. I've got some black and white. Uh, to that, we're going to add some citrus because it's a citrus soy sauce. So we've got some lemon rind. Straight over the top. Remember when you're rinding citrus, make sure you do it over the top of the bowl because those oils go in there. We're going to add one rind of an uh, orange, again, over the top of the bowl. And then we're going to add uh, orange juice and just squeeze them through your hands and get all that juice in there. About half a cup. Ah, looks so good. Give it a mix and that's pretty well it. That's my quick ponzu sauce. I'm just going to throw it into a, a little bowl just to serve it up so it looks nice and pretty and it's easy to dip. <laughs> He's looking after the corn for me because I'm uh, pretty horrible at multitasking. Perfect, all right. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay, so next is we're onto our super simple uh, corn glaze. So I've got some shallots. I'm just going to take these ends off here. And then I'm just going to run my knife through there. Okay, so we're going to go about four tablespoons of soy sauce. It's going to go straight into a bowl. Going to go about three tablespoons of mirin into the same bowl. Get chopped up shallots. Just so scoop them up and throw them in there. And then a little bit of sugar as well. All right, so our corn's pretty close. I'm just going to brush it on top while it's on the grill and that's going to caramelise and fall between those corn cobs and it's just going to be out of control great. That's reduced down, those sugars have all come together and man it smells good. So I'm just going to take it off, I'm going to throw it into a little bowl here. Alright, so the corn's cooking, it's pretty well done. All the sauces are done, the dipping sauces. Now it's about skewering the chicken and making the yakitori. So pretty simple, it's going to go straight in the barbecue and then we're going to cook it, glaze it and eat it. <laughs> For yakitori is to skewer, you know, to cook meat on the barbecue and to skewer. So we're not just going to do the fillet, we're also going to do some chicken wings as well. You guys look hungry. <laughs> All right, so this is my chicken wing. This is my chicken fillet. It's going on the barbecue. It's that easy. We're going to give them an awesome glazing with our soy, ginger and garlic glaze. Sounds amazing. Smells amazing. It's just like a win-win, right? <laughs> All right, so now it's time for the wagyu beef. So. This is what you're after with Wagyu beef. It's the marbling, which is so unique to Wagyu and local to Japan. The actual fat itself renders and it keeps the flesh moist and tender and just so unbelievably tasty. This is gonna take no time at all to cook. 30 seconds or a minute, you can see it starting to render. You know, all the moisture comes to the top. The corn's ready to go. What we'll do is just gonna pop it onto the chopping board. It's not burn, it's caramelization from the sugar and the glazing sauce. Okay, so that's everything pretty well ready. The beef's cooked, the chicken's glazed. I mean, how awesome does that look? Plate it up, we'll feed the masses with this awesome beef, corn, chicken yakitori, and the dipping sauces. It's a winning combination. And of course, an epic cup of matcha green tea. Oji. Oji. Oji? Oji, yeah.
very oishi. <laughs> Thank you. Ponzu, That's good? Ponzu. Ponzu good? Yeah, there we go. I've impressed the locals. Making new friends. <laughs> Ponzu oishi. Which one's your favourite? Beef. Yeah, he likes the beef. He likes the wagyu. Corn? Mmm, okay. It's quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like chicken? Chicken. All right, we've all got our different flavours. <laughs> awesome company, great mates, epic food, epic matcha green tea. The only thing it can make it better is maybe some lemon gelati. Oh, what do you reckon, yeah? yeah. <laughs> you seem pretty impressed. <laughs> Let's get dessert happening, what do you reckon? Little chef trick, lemon, little bit of matcha on top. Little combination I like to play with. For you, lemon gelati with a bit of your awesome nice. matcha green tea. Cool. Arigato gozaimasu. Oh, yeah. mm. I ran out of spoons, <laughs> so I'm just becoming a local. Oh, big good. Mm. <laughs> <Oji. laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, what an amazing experience. We've made some new friends. We've learned so much about matcha green tea. I think I'm in love with Japan. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out next episode of Source. Arigato! Arigato! What they said. <laughs> Arigato! Arigato!